Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins in the last part. We began the game, we headed into the Fade and uh, fought a bunch of demons and chatted to demons and had a very interesting beginning to our character here. And now we are in this uh, tower, the Tower of Magi was it called? Or Circle of Magi, something like that. And uh, we have a main quest to follow. We have people to talk to. Let's see where the day takes us. Apprentice Mage. Congratulations on your test. Appreciate it. Is that is that it? Is that what we've got to say? Congratulations on your test. Okay, we got a chest. What's in the chest? Lyrium dust. This is lyrium found in a natural powdered state, ready to be incorporated into potions. Yoink. Uh, is there anything else? How far away do things like highlight? Uh, about there. Okay. So you have to get fairly close to notice something. Um, now, is that the way we're actually leaving? Let's let's look at the map. So we are there. Apprentice dorm. Second floor. Classrooms. Where was it that he said to go? Uh, doesn't actually give directions. It just says Irving would like to speak with you. I guess we just explore then. That's fine by me. Vanity. Blank vellum. Fine treated lambskin suitable for extracting, for exacting illustration and script. We heard you pass the harrowing. I did. I wonder when I'll get to go for my harrowing. When you get good. Got the bogs. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything. That door's open. Is this just the same corridor or is this to a different... No, this is just the same corridor. Okay. Metal door. <laughs> That's a metal door that opened sounding like a wood door. Rabel hasn't said anything yet. And shh, we're on duty. Yeah, there's no one here. Someone's always watching. I swear it's like the walls have eyes. Did you hear about that apprentice shh. they're going to send for? Hmm. Is that me? That's a cool painting. I'm thinking that looks like where we're going. So let's check the other way. See if there's anything to see down here. Did you hear? Hear what? I heard they suspect someone of dabbling in blood magic. Uh -oh. Why would anyone do something so stupid? That's a death sentence. Wait, what? It sounds like his voice is coming from miles away suddenly. That's what I hear anyway. That was weird. Like, I could I could still hear him, but it was sounding like it was coming from really far away. <laughs> How does it feel to be done with the harrowing? Did you hear about the apprentice who disappeared last week? Can't say I did. Oh, I'm sure he's fine. Lesser Lyrium Potion. Contains a small amount of refined lyrium. Lyrium potions instantly restore a portion of the user's mana. Only spellcasters can use it. Okay. Gotta be thorough. Don't want to miss anything. I'm very much a scavenger. Right. What have we got over here? Shiny. Thank you. Uh, what is this? To the basement. Can we go to the basement? Ah, we can, but it takes me to a new area. Uh, I'm guessing that means it's locked. Not happening. Locks and traps. Only rogues can open locks or disarm traps. Their ability is determined by cunning and talents. Interesting. So, am I never going to be able to get through here, but a rogue would be able to get through here? But then how would a rogue even be here? Because surely a rogue wouldn't start here. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, those do not refill when you enter and exit areas. Good to know. Alright. Yoink me some of that. Must control the fire with your will. Keep the flames steady, 
We don't want it sputtering and leaping about. That's what causes most of the injuries. Injuries? <laughs> but, but, but... Steady. It reacts to your emotions. If you panic, it will... No, no, no. Breathe. <laughs> you know, in my experience, Flint and Tinder works just as well. Maybe we should start with that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Ah, oh, congratulations on your harrowing. It gets easier as the years go by, doesn't it? Uh, I hope so, man. I hope so. Otherwise, you're in for a really bad time. By the way, I've just uh, knocked the game volume down a smidge since the first part. Let me know if it sounds any better. I thought it was mostly fine, just maybe a little bit too loud in the first part. Just a, just a touch. So I've just taken it down by a tiny amount. But let me know what you think. Gerda told me the Templars watch us while we bathe. I hope that's not true. Yeesh. We're all really happy for you. Magic must serve man and not rule over him. Very good. And what do you think that means? Can anyone tell me? Only boys can do magic. Hey! Yeah, no, I don't no, think that's, that's what that means. <laughs> it means that magic should be used to help people. But we can't use our magic to... to force people to do what we want. That's right. We should not abuse the gift the Maker has given us. Boys are better at magic than girls. Okay, I don't like this dude. <laughs> being in the tower is much better than being on the farm. The Templars scare me. They always look so mean. Yeah, they seem pretty ready to murder anyone, so probably correct to be wary. <laughs> I heard your harrowing went well. That's wonderful to hear. Man, you really would think they'd come up with a nicer name for it. <laughs> I hear Irving's waiting to give you your mage robes. Uh, new codex, the Fade. Okay, okay. Let's have ourselves a look, shall we? Magic and religion, the Fade. The study of the Fade is as old as humankind. For so long as men have dreamed, we have walked its twisting paths, sometimes catching a glimpse of the city at its heart. Always as close as our own thoughts, but impossibly separated from our world. The Tevinter Imperium once spent vast fortunes of gold, lyrium, and human slaves in an effort to map the terrain of the Fade, an ultimately futile endeavour. Although portions of it belong to powerful spirits, all of the Fade is in constant flux. The Imperium succeeded in finding the disparate and ever-shifting realms of a dozen demon lords, as well as cataloguing a few hundred types of spirits before they were forced to abandon the project. The relationship of dreamers to the Fade is complex. Even when entering the Fade through the use of Lyrium, mortals are not able to control or affect it. The spirits who dwell there, however, can, and as the Chantry teaches us, the great flaw of the spirits is that they have neither imagination nor ambition. They create what they see through their sleeping visitors, building elaborate copies of our cities, people, and events which, like the reflections in a mirror, ultimately lack context or life of their own. Even the most powerful demons merely plagiarise the worst thoughts and fears of mortals and build their realms with no other ambition than to taste life. From Tranquility and the Role of the Fade in Human Culture by First Enchanter Josephus. We're all really happy for you. Concentrate, hold the shield. <laughs> all my power behind that spell, you would have been obliterated. I am not your enemy. Fear is your enemy. It is a weakness that can be exploited. Should you face a demon with your will wavering so, it would consume you. Is that what you want? <laughs> no. <laughs> Stand firm no. and know you can resist whatever I throw at you. Again. Better. It's nice to see you still alive. Nice to be alive. Hello there. Hello there. What is this drawing of? We've seen it a couple of times. What have we got here? Manor and the use of magic. Manor is that which defines a mage. It is potential that dwells within a person, but does not always manifest itself. All men are connected to the Fade, we go there to dream, but only those with this potential may draw upon its power. 
Mana is, then, a measurement of one's ability to draw power from the Fade, and it is this power that is expended in magic. As in all other things, it has limits. Just as a man has a strength to lift only so much weight and no more, a mage cannot work with more magic at one time than his mana allows. If he wishes to work magic that would be beyond his strength, a mage must bolster his mana with Lyrium. Without Lyrium, it is possible for the Reckless to expend their own life force in the working of magic, and occasionally ambitious apprentices injure or even kill themselves by overexertion. From the Lectures of First Enchanter Wenselus. Jowan's been acting weird all day. Have you seen him? Jowan. Okay, that's how it's pronounced. Jowan. I can't wait for my harrowing. Uh, now, what is this? This is taking me to the second floor. We got ourselves a cheeky save. Owain. Have we heard of Owain? I feel like I have heard that name mentioned. Welcome to the Circle Stockroom of Magical Items. My name is Owain. How may I assist you? Oh, he's the one that got made tranquil. Right. What's the stockroom for? The stockroom stores components used in magical and alchemical experiments. Do you require something? Are you really a tranquil mage? I voluntarily submitted to the right of tranquility. I was unwilling to undergo the harrowing. I find this state agreeable. Uh, don't you think what they did to you is cruel? Tranquility has its merits. I see the world with clarity. I remember the days when my mind was filled with inconvenient and seething emotions. Now things are simple. Emotions are what, like, make us human though. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's still a person. What was becoming tranquil like? It is difficult to describe. I would perhaps compare it to being plunged into a pool of ice-cold water. What happened during the rite? I was ordered to never speak of it. I cannot go against the Circle's wishes. Oh, should I say this one and see what he says? I guess so. My body is similar in form to yours, possessing an equal number of limbs, appendages and internal organs. I perform the same physical functions. My mind is capable of higher thought processes. Am I to be denied personhood because I do not feel as you do? Uh... A person is more than just physical parts. I have thoughts and memories. I remember my past, my childhood in the tower, and my apprenticeship. These experiences defined me. My lack of emotion simply adds to what is already there. Emotions are essential. I propose we agree to disagree. Personhood is not measurable. Therefore, we should let this rest. Fair. Very well. Goodbye. Uh, was there anything else? Welcome to the Circle Stockroom of Magical Items. My name is Owen. Uh, is that how you greet how everyone? How may I assist you? Do you find my greeting disagreeable? I apologize, but I am not inclined to change it. Do you need something? Uh, what can I buy here? The stockroom is not a shop. Your mentor should have clarified this. The stockroom stores components used in magical and alchemical experiments. Do you require something? No. Very well. Goodbye. <laughs> Okie doke. Is there something you need? You must speak to Owain. Good day to you. Little bit creepy. Definitely a little bit creepy. What's that? Third floor's locked. I'm not sure. Is that is that my destination? First Enchanter Irving. Okay, so my destination is on the second floor. So, in that case, I should go and speak to the people guarding that other bit, which I thought was where we were going. Can I move between floors on the map? Uh, I don't think so. Unless, can I click? No, that just toggles the legend. Okay. Um, I don't think there's a sprint either, is there? None of this is like a sprint thing, is it? No. Q 
keep running and running and running and yeah, keep running and running and running and come on. At least I'm learning the layout of this place. I imagine we'll be spending a decent amount of time here. Okay, what did you have to say then? Yes, is there something you need? Uh, that's a big door. Yes, it is. Do you need something or are you just here to state the obvious? <laughs> Can you open it? <laughs> the night commander would have my head if I did that. Besides, I hear it takes no less than four grown men to open this door. I can't leave then. No, you may not. I'm surprised you ask. I would have thought you'd be used to this idea by now. They really just keep us locked up, huh? Uh, why can't I leave? Only mages on official circle business are allowed to leave the tower. And the first enchanter has not informed us of any mages leaving the tower today. Is this the only way out? The only safe one, as far as I know. There are windows on the higher levels, but surely you don't need me to warn you of the dangers of leaping from them. It never ends well. Uh, what's out there? For Elden, it's not very interesting. Mostly farms, the occasional river. Make a smile fortune on you. Okay, well he was matter of fact, but he wasn't really being a dick. <clears throat> okay, okay. And back we go. Man, I'm really liking this. I'm really liking this so far. Very interesting. They're throwing a whole lot at me. All these different, like, terms and another realm and conflicts going on between different, like, groups. It is a lot to take in all at once, but it's good. Once I, uh, <laughs> once I, oh, that's cool, it tracks your stats. Once I get my head around it, then uh, I will be a lot more immersed in the world and everything. Uh, which way should I go? Let's go this way first. Cool, this floor's a little bit more maze-like. Senior Enchanter Sweeney. Oh, uh, hello. I don't believe we've met. Are you new to the circle? Uh, I'm a newly harrowed mage, but I've lived here all my life. I'm sorry. There are so many of you, and I get confused. Not to mention, these old eyes are starting to go. <laughs> I'd say they've already gone. Uh, can someone help you fix them? You're too kind. I'm old and about to fall apart. Nothing in the world can fix that. Uh, can magic? Not any magic I'd be caught doing. Anyway, did you need something? I just wanted to talk. I'm not good at talking. Too much chatter makes my head throb. Don't you have lessons to get to? Shoo! Did you just shoo me, motherfucker? You just shooed me. Uh, the Four Schools of Magic. Primal. Uh, this one. Those who oppose thee shall know the wrath of heaven. Field and forest shall burn. The seas shall rise and devour them. The wind shall tear their nations from the face of the earth. Lightning shall rain down from the sky. They shall cry out to their false gods and find silence. Andraste 719. Sometimes called the School of Power, the Primal School is the second of the Schools of Energy, balanced by spirit, and concerns the most visible and tangible forces of nature itself. This is the magic of war, fire, ice, and lightning. Devastation. This is what the vast majority imagines when they hear the word magic. From the Four Schools, a treatise by First Enchanter Josephus. A section of books appears to be missing, interesting. Uh, creation magic. Opposition in all things. For earth, sky. For winter, summer. For darkness, light. By my will alone is balance sundered and the world given new life. Threnodiaz 5-5. The school of creation, sometimes called the school of nature, is the second of the schools of matter, the balancing force and complement of entropy. Creation magic manipulates natural forces, transforming what exists and bringing new things into being. Creation requires considerable finesse, more than any other school, and is therefore rarely mastered. 
Those mages who have made a serious study of creation are in the highest, are the highest in demand. Useful in times of peace as well as war. Hierarchy of the Circle. It is no simple matter safeguarding ordinary men from mages and mages from themselves. Each circle tower must have some measures of self-government, for it is ever the maker's will that men be given the power to take responsibility for our own actions, to sin and fail, as well as to achieve the highest grace and glory on our own strength. You, who will be tasked with the protection of the circle, must be aware of its workings. The first enchanter is the heart of any tower. He will determine the course his circle will take, he will choose which apprentices may be tested and made full mages, and you will work most closely with him. Assisting the first enchanter will be the senior enchanters, a small council of the most trusted and experienced magi in the tower. From this group, the next first enchanter is always chosen. Beneath the council are the enchanters. These are the teachers and mentors of the tower, and you must get to know them in order to keep your finger on the pulse of the circle, for the enchanters will always know what is happening among the children. All those who have passed their harrowing but have not taken apprentices are mages. This is where most trouble in the circle lies, in the idleness and inexperience of youth. The untested apprentices are the most numerous denizens of any tower, but they mo more often pose threats to themselves due to their lack of training than to anyone else. Knight Commander Serain of the Chantry Templars in a letter to his successor. Okay, where's the other two schools of magic books at? Oh, hello. Do you need something? If not, step back. You're in my light. All right. Your light? I'm trying to study. Have some consideration for a fellow mage. Uh. I mean, that's rude. Well spoken for an elf. Eh, it's kind of rude. That's. They're all pretty rude. But I want to keep the conversation going. You're well spoken? It's kind of like. <laughs> the for an elf bit makes it kind of backhanded, but we'll see how this goes. What does that mean? Are you saying elves cannot be educated, that we lack the capacity to learn? Well, if you haven't realized by now, elves and humans are equal in the circle. Hmm, I suppose it isn't entirely your fault. With so many elves living in alienages apart from humans, it's difficult for you to get a true idea of who we are. Ironically, many of us don't know who we are either. Uh... What, what is there to know? What, what do you mean? Elves have lived under human rule for so long that much of our history and culture has been lost. Rip. As a mage, I have an opportunity to prove myself. Uh, that sounds like a noble goal. Thank you. But I should get back to my books. Thanks for talking with me. Good day. Okay, so elves have had a bit of a bad time of it, it sounds like. Owain is in charge of the stock room. They haven't done anything, and I've heard that the Equitarians are starting to soften a little on the Libertarian position. Sympathy for the position isn't the same as support. Yet. As far as I know, most Equitarians prefer to remain allied with the Loyalists. You can see why, don't you? Just think of what the Chantry would do if suddenly the Circles were petitioning for more independence or even a split. Won't be pretty. Ah, the short-sighted Libertarians. They'll get their way and take us all down with them. I think someone's here to speak to you, Senior Torren. Hello. Hello. Congratulations on your harrowing last night. Good work. Uh, what were you talking about earlier? Oh, the Fraternities of the Enchanters. You probably haven't heard of them. It's best not to get tangled up in circle politics. More trouble than it's worth, really. Hmm. Tell me about the Fraternities. Uh, oh, they're found in all circles throughout Thedas. Groups of Enchanters who hold similar viewpoints, who band together to make their voices heard. The most influential fraternity are the Equitarians. They are moderates and believe in a code of conduct that all mages should adhere to. Then there are the Chantry apologists, the Loyalists. The Chantry says something and they follow it to the letter. The Lucrosians just want to make money. And the Isolationists would like us all to be hermits and live on an island. Then of course there are the Libertarians. They want more power for the Circle, more autonomy. Uh, which do you belong to? 
Well, if I had to, I'd say I was an Equitarian, but I ducked out of the fray a long time ago. Most of the senior enchanters are Equitarians. Irving, Wynne, Sweeney. Ulred's a Libertarian, and a loud one at that. Ah, uh, mages have enough opposition from the outside without tearing our circles apart with infighting. But what can you do? Well, giving up doesn't help anyone. An idealist, I see. Well, if you're going to change the world, you should get started immediately. Lots of world to cover. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Codex, the Fraternity of Enchanters. Another aspect of circle life is the fraternity. When a mage becomes an enchanter, he may ally himself with a fraternity. These are cliques that cross circle boundaries, mages of common interests and goals who band together to ensure that their voice is heard within the College of Magi in Cumberland. The largest fraternities currently are, currently are the Loyalists, who advocate loyalty and obedience to the Chantry, the Equitarians, who advocate temperance and follow a distinct code of conduct which they believe all mages sh should hold themselves to, the liber Libertarians, a growing fraternity, publicly maintaining greater power for the Circles, but secretly advocating a complete split from the Chantry, a dangerous opinion, naturally. The Isolationists, a small group that advocates withdrawing to remote territories in order to avoid conflicts with the general populace, the Lucrosians, who maintain that the Circle must do what is profitable first and foremost. They prioritise the accumulation of wealth, with the gaining of political influence a close second. So far, an alliance between the Loyalists and Equitarians has prevented the Libertarians from gaining much headway, but there are signs that the Equitarians may throw their support in with the Libertarians. If that happens, many majors predict it will come to civil war among the Circles. Interesting. Hello, were you looking for something? Uh, what were you talking to him about? Oh, the fraternities. Groups of mages with a common agenda. <sighs> I think we should all be isolationists. Stay in some remote mountain town far away from the mundanes who hate us. <laughs> the mundanes. Uh, why don't you go off then? I'd go hide alone in the wilds if I could. But you know they just brand me an apostate and hunt me down. There is no leaving the circle. It's till death do us part. Romantic, isn't it? Who are you? I'm Njal, a mage just like you. I've seen you around, haven't I? I must have. Can't stay to All chat. Right. Have a good day. Hang on, I want to. Oh no, I can't go back into his dialogue. There was an op there was an option which was apostate question mark, and I wanted to ask about that too. But all right, have a good day. I cannot. I thought all people that were just like stood around like this, I would be able to go through all their dialogue stuff. Codex updated? Did I just see? What was that? I thought I just saw codex updated. Hmm. Maybe not. Uh, the Four Schools of Magic Entropy. To you, my secondborn, I grant this gift. In your heart shall burn an unquenchable flame, all-consuming and never satisfied. The second of the two schools of matter, entropy is the opposing force of creation. For this reason, this is often called the school of negation. Nothing lives without death. Time inevitably brings an end to all things in the material world, and yet in this ending is the seed of a beginning. A river may flood its banks, causing havoc, but bring new life to its floodplain. The fire that burns a forest ushers in new growth. And so it is with entropic magic that we manipulate the forces of erosion, decay, and destruction to create anew. Which just leaves... Never mind, this is a different one. History of the Circle. It is a truth universally acknowledged that nothing is more successful at inspiring a person to mischief as being told not to do something. Unfortunately, the Chantry of, of the Divine Age had some trouble with obvious truths. Although it did not outlaw magic, quite the contrary, as the Chantry relied upon magic to kindle the eternal flame, which burns in every brazier in every Chantry, it relegated mages to lighting candles and lamps, perhaps occasional dusting of rafters and eaves. I will give my readers a moment to contemplate how well such a role satisfied the mages of the time. It surprised absolutely no one when the mages of Val Royo, in protest, snuffed the sacred flames of the cathedral and barricaded themselves in the choir loft. No one, that is, but Divine Ambrosia II, who was outraged and attempted to order an exalted march upon her own cathedral. Even her most devout Templars discouraged that idea. 
For 21 days, the fires remained unlit while negotiations were conducted, legend tells us, by shouting back and forth from the loft. The mages went cheerily into exile in a remote fortress outside of the capital, where they would be kept under the watchful eye of the Templars and a council of their own elder magi. Outside of normal society, and outside of the Chantry, the mages would form their own closed society, the Circle, separated for the first time in human history. Cool. So is this the last one of the schools of magic? Yes, spirit magic. And the voice of the maker shook the fade, saying, In my image I have wrought my firstborn. You have been given dominion over all that exists. By your will, all things are done. Yet you do nothing. The realm I have given you is formless, ever changing. The first of the two schools of energy, spirit is opposed by the primal school. It is the school of mystery, the ephemeral school. This is the study of the invisible energies which surround us at all times, yet are outside of nature. It is from the Fade itself that this magic draws its power. Students of this school cover everything from direct manipulation of mana and spell energies to the study and summoning of spirits themselves. By its nature, an esoteric school, as most others know virtually nothing about the Fade, studies of spirit magic are often misunderstood by the general populace or even confused for blood magic, an unfortunate fate for a most useful branch of study. Very interesting. Man, they are fleshing out this world a lot. I love it. Fucking eat that shit up. Yes. Yum, 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 yum. What have we got in here? Um, what? Acolyte's Staff. Compare. Wait, nothing equipped? Don't I have... Yeah, hmm. Uh, many of these ancient staves remain from the days when the Tevinter Imperium still ruled much of Ferelden. Infused with Lyrium, it serves as a channel for a mage's power, able to fire bolts of energy in combat. D I thought I already had... It says nothing equipped, but I thought I... Uh, character. Huh. I guess that weapon didn't actually exist then. I guess that weapon only existed in the Fade. And so when I came out the Fade, I lost it. Interesting. Does it auto-equip? Uh, no. Okay. Basically the same. Okay. Oh, excuse me. I didn't hear you come in. I'm sorry, I'm terribly busy right now. I have to prepare the room before the Grey Warden is done at his meeting with Irving. There's a Grey Warden here? That's from the intro cutscene, right? The people that defeated the Darkspawn ages ago? Yes, Duncan his name is. He must be here to talk to Irving about something important. You know, I almost became a Grey Warden once. Really? There were several of us chosen, though the Grey Wardens only wanted one recruit. Uh, they only ever have one mage, you see. Right. I think they thought I was the best candidate, but I was young and foolish, and I said I wasn't interested. They picked someone else instead, and that was that. I've regretted it ever since. Ah, oh, well, I should get back to my work. Rip. Good day. Uh, anything over here? Nope. Boop. Some dust. Ah, there you are. You are to be moved out of the apprentice's dormitory, and these are to be your new quarters. Ah, nice. The Tranquil will move your belongings this afternoon. Go on, make yourself comfortable. Not a bad little room. No, uh, no privacy. I see. <laughs> I heard that you completed the harrowing in record time. Oh, really? I did not hear that, but, uh, that's good. I'm a fast boy. I should have been sent to help the King's army. I dislike being stuck here while something big is happening. 
Sorry to hear. Sorry to hear. Greetings. I'm glad your harrowing went well. Who are you? I am Cullen. I was to strike the killing blow if you had uh, become an abomination. Yeah, well, I thanks for not. I am glad you didn't. <laughs> you would have if it was called for. Yes, you would. I thought all Templars liked killing mages. How would you have known if I had become one? Honestly, I've never seen an abomination. Or been called on to slay one. Uh, so you could have made a mistake? Gregor would have guided me. Something must happen. But what if it's not obvious? Could abominations be walking among us right now? Oh no. <laughs> they are walking among us. Uh, I'm sure there's no abominations here. You had best be on your guard. <laughs> I'm sure there's none here. Let's not get him all scared. This is still new to me. Maybe one day I'll be as dedicated and driven as Knight Commander Gregor. Uh, if you say so. You must be busy. Perhaps we can talk another time. Sure. I hope you are well. What have we got in here? Some more dust. Did you see that Grey Warden? I hear he's trying to recruit a mage for his order. Oh, okay. I get a feeling I know why we're being summoned then. The Cardinal Rules of Magic You must not be under the, misimpre the misimpression that magic is all-powerful. There are limits, and not even the greatest mages may overcome them. No one, for instance, has found any means of travelling, either over great distances or small ones, beyond putting one foot in front of the other. The immutable nature of the physical world prevents this. So no, you may not simply pop over to Minrathus to borrow a cup of sugar, nor may you magic the essay you forgot in the apprentice dormitory to your desk. You will simply have to be prepared. Similarly, even when you send your mind into the Fade, your body remains behind. Only once has, only once has this barrier been overcome. Wait, oh, so it can be overcome? Uh, and re reputedly, the spell required two-thirds of the Lyrium in the Tevinter Imperium, as well as the lifeblood of several hundred slaves. The results were utterly disastrous. Jesus. Finally, life is finite. A truly great healer may bring someone back from the very precipice of death, when breath and heartbeat have ceased, but the spirit still clings to life. But once the spirit has fled the body, it cannot be recalled. That is no failing of your skills or power, it is a simple reality. Reality check. Private documents. A list of household accounts and expenditures over time, useful for merchants negotiating contracts and wages. Sure, I'll have that. What happens if I click the X button while in a room like this? Does he... No, he doesn't do anything. Okay, good. I, I was just suddenly like, what if I accidentally, like, shot someone? <laughs> uh, how far am I... I'm, okay, I'm not close to the actual uh, main quest yet. Okay. Ah, it's great to see you. It's always sad when an apprentice fails the harrowing. Yeah, I bet you're devastated, mate. Frostrock. Shards of lifestone are infused with magic, either naturally or by one of the tranquil. Frostrocks radiate cold and can be used in many isolated potions and traps. Elfruit, common name for canav canavaris. This herb actually has little to do with elves, other than being commonly collected and traded to outsiders by the Dalish. It is the primary ingredient in many healing salves. And deep mushrooms. Uh, fungi found underground in close proximity to lyrium veins. In addition to their restorative properties, they can also be made into poisons. Lovely! Almost didn't actually remember to take them. That would have been bad. Don't Storage room. So. Key required. Okie doke. Senior enchanter Lyra. You're not going to keep the first enchanter waiting, are you? I'll do what I fucking like, mate. Ah, this is infuriating. Another batch destroyed. Say, have you seen Owain? I have. Is he in the stockroom? Yes, I just spoke to him. Oh, excellent. He wasn't there last I looked. I hope he still has some cinnabar lying around. When I asked last week, he said he was running out. 
Don't you have something better to do? Can we go get that for him, I wonder? I'd avoid Leora if I were you. She's been rather testy lately. Uh, why? Who knows? I'm not going to ask her why she's irritable. Women hate those kind of questions. Hope you're having a good day. <laughs> oh yeah, mate. Just top. Just went to the fucking fade. Uh, Malef Maleficarum. It has been asked, what are Maleficarum? How shall we know them? I have been as troubled by this question as you. You have come to me for the wisdom of the Maker, but none have seen the Maker's heart save beloved Andraste. And so I have done as all mortals must, and looked to the words of his prophet for answers. And there I found respite from a troubled mind. For she has said to us, Magic exists to serve man, and never to rule over him. Therefore I say to you, they who work magic which dominates the minds and hearts of others, they have transgressed the Maker's law. Also, Our Lady said to us, those who bring harm without provocation to the least of his children are hated and accursed by the Maker. And so it is made clear to me, as it should be to us all, that magic which, which fuels itself by harming others, by the letting of blood, is hated by the Maker. Those mages who honour the Maker and keep his laws, we welcome as our brothers and sisters. Those who reject the laws of the Maker and the words of his prophet are apostate. They shall be cast out and given no place among us. A modus. You're not going to keep the first enchanter waiting, are you? Okay, uh, let's head back then. I don't know, can I walk around in a full circle? No, there is a wall uh, in between where we came up, it looks like. So I think we have to walk all the way around this way. I might be wrong. Uh, in... Or maybe I could just go... Wait, no, I might have just been able to walk out there. Oh, well, whatever. Can I get your help? Welcome to the Circle Stockroom of Magical Items. My name is Owain. How may I assist you? Uh, it looks like I can't get the thing for the dude. The Stockroom. The Stockroom stores component. Very... Never mind then. Uh, so if I go out this way... Is this where I just was? Is that that one dude? Yeah, okay. Never mind. Doop, doop, doop. Got a book. The Right of Annulment. In the 83rd year of the Glory Age, one of the mages of the Navaran Circle was found practicing forbidden magic. The Templars executed him swiftly, but this brewed discontent among the Navara Circle. The mages made several magical attacks against the Templars, vengeance for the executed mage, but the Knight Commander was unable to track down which were responsible. Three months later, the mages summoned a demon and turned it loose against their Templar Watchers. Demons, however, are not easily controlled. After killing the first wave of Templars who tried to contain it, the demon took possession of one of its summoners. The resulting abomination slaughtered Templars and mages both, before escaping into the countryside. The Grand Cleric sent a legion of Templars to hunt the fugitive. They killed the Abomination a year later, but by that time it had slain 70 people. Divine Galatea, responding to the catastrophe in Navarra and hoping to prevent further incidents, granted all the Grand, Cleric Grand Clerics of the Chantry the power to purge a circle entirely if they rule it irredeemable. Jesus. This rite of annulment has been performed 17 times in the last 700 years? That's insane! So, I assume purge means kill every mage inside? Or they just go to a fucking tower and just murder everyone if they just happen to decide it's irredeemable? And it's happened 17 times in the last, in the last 700 years? One time would be bad. Fuck me. Blessed art thou who exists in the sight of the Maker. Uh, I mean, she'd probably be mad if we interrupt her prayer, right? So let's stay silent. Blessed are the penitents who seek his return. Blessed is the prophetess, purified by flame. May the chant reach the Maker's ears and tell him of our contrition. So let it be. Oh, I didn't see you there. 
I recite the Maker's blessings every day. It brings me peace in troubled times. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, are you in trouble? No, no, not really. It's just... I, I don't want to bore you with this. It's alright. I want to know. It gives me hope that one day the Maker will hear us. That maybe I'll be forgiven and my curse will be lifted. Curse? Magic? What else? You don't like having this power? Magic causes such misery. It's dangerous and vile and wicked. The Chantry must protect the world from us. So you're a loyalist then? Something so terrible must be a punishment. I wish I could be rid of it. Uh... You could use your abilities to help people. That doesn't take magic. If I could, I would dedicate my life to the Chantry. But they would never take me in. Perhaps this is just something I will have to suffer through. I should go. My mentor only allows a few minutes each day for religious contemplation. Alright, adios. Codex updated. Something did update. What? What updated? Hmm. Does anyone know when it says like codex updated but it's not a new thing? Is there any way to tell what it is? Because I do not know. Hmm. The founding of the Chantry. See, that is obvious. <laughs> Cordilius Dracon, king of the city-state of Orlay, was a man of uncommon ambition. In the year minus 15 ancient, the young king began construction of a great temple dedicated to the Maker, and declared that by its completion he would not only have unified he would he would not only let's start that again, and declared that by its completion he would not only have united the warring city states of the south, he would have brought Andrastian belief to the world. In minus three ancient, the temple was completed. There in its heart, Dracon knelt before the eternal flame of Andraste and was crowned ruler of the Empire of Orlais. His first act as emperor to declare the Chantry as the established Andrastian religion of the Empire. It took three years and several hundred votes before Olesa of Montsimard was elected to lead the new Chantry. Upon her coronation as divine, she took the name Justinia, in honour of the disciple who recorded Andraste's songs. In that moment, the ancient era ended and the divine age began. Okay, so the Chantry is a full-on religion. And it's led by someone called the Divine. Okay. Good to know, good to know. The Prophet Andraste. Andraste, Bride of the Maker. There was once a tiny fishing village on the Waking Sea that was set upon by the Tevinter Imperium, which enslaved the villagers to be sold in the markets of Minrathus, leaving behind only the old and the infirm. One of the captives was the child Andraste. She was raised in slavery in a foreign land. She escaped, then made the long and treacherous journey back to her homeland alone. She rose from nothing to be the wife of an Al Alamari warlord. Each day she sang to the gods, asking them to help her people who remained slaves in Tevinter. The false gods of the mountains and the winds did not answer her, but the true god did. The maker spoke. He showed her all the works of his hands, the fade, the world, and all the creatures therein. He showed her how men had forgotten him, lavishing devotion upon mute idols and demons, and how he had left them to their fate. But her voice had reached him and so captivated him that he offered her a place at his side that she might rule all of creation. But Andraste would not forsake her people. She begged the Maker to return, to save his children from the cruelty of the Imperium. Reluctantly, the Maker agreed to give man another chance. Andraste went back to her husband, Mafareth, and told him, that all that the make and told him all that the Maker had revealed to her. Together they rallied the Alamari and marched forth against the mage lords of the Imperium, and the Maker was with them. The Maker's sword was creation itself, fire and flood, famine and earthquake. Everywhere they went, Andraste sang to the people of the Maker, and they heard her. The ranks of Andraste's followers grew until they were a vast tide washing over the Imperium. And when Mafareth saw that the people loved Andraste and not him, a worm grew within his heart, gnawing upon it. 
At last, the armies of Andraste and Mafarath stood before the very gates of Minrathus, but Andraste was not with them. For Matharath had schemed in secret to hand Andraste over to the Tevinter. For this, the Archon would give Matharath all the lands to the south of the Waking Sea. And so, before all the armies of the Alamari and of Tevinter, Andraste was tied to a stake and burned, while her earthly husband turned his armies aside and did nothing, for his heart had been devoured. But as he watched the pyre, the Archon softened. He took pity on Andraste and drew his sword and granted her the mercy of a quick death. The Maker wept for his beloved, cursed Mafarath, cursed mankind for their betrayal, and turned once again from creation, taking only Andraste with him. And Our Lady st sits still at his side, where she still urges him to take pity on his children. From the Sermons of Justinia II. Well, Andraste sounded like she had a bad time of it. Hello, Lily. I heard about your harrowing. Congratulations. Andraste must have smiled upon you. Mm, must have. The Maker. There was no word for heaven or for earth, for sea or sky. All that existed was silence. Then the voice of the Maker ran out, the first word, and his word became all that might be. Dream and idea, hope and fear, endless possibilities and from it made his firstborn. And he said to them, In my image I forge you. To you I give dominion over all that exists. By your will may all things be done. Then in the centre of heaven he called forth a city with towers of gold, streets with music for cobblestones, and banners which flew without wind. There he dwelled, waiting, to see the wonders his children would create. The children of the Maker gathered before his golden throne and sang hymns of praise unending, but their songs were the songs of the cobblestones. They shone with the golden light reflected from the Maker's throne. They held forth the banners that flew on their own. And the voice of the Maker shook the fade, saying, In my image I have wrought my firstborn. You have been given dominion over all that exists. By your will all things are done, yet you do nothing. The realms I have given you is formless, ever-changing. And he knew he had wrought amiss. So the Maker turned from his firstborn and took from the Fade a measure of its living flesh, and placed it apart from the spirits, and spoke to it, saying, Here I decree, opposition in all things, for earth, sky, for winter, summer, for darkness, light. By my will alone is balance sundered, and the world given new life. And no longer was it formless, ever-changing, but held fast, immutable, with words for heaven and for earth, sea and sky. At last did the Maker from the living world make men, immutable as the substance of the earth, with souls made of dream and idea, hope and fear, endless possibilities. Then the Maker said, To you, my second-born, I grant this gift. In your heart shall burn an unquenchable flame, all-consuming and never satisfied. From the Fade I crafted you, and to the Fade you shall return, each night in dreams, that you may always remember me. And then the Maker sealed the gates of the Golden City, and there he dwelled, waiting to see the wonders his children would create. The Chant of Light, the Blight No matter their power, their triumphs, the Mage Lords of Tevinter were men and doomed to die. Then a voice whispered within their hearts, Shall you surrender your power to time like the beasts of the fields? You are the Lords of the Earth. Go forth to claim the empty throne of Heaven, and be gods. In secret they worked, magic upon magic. All their power and all their vanity they turned against the veil until at last it gave way. Above them a river of light, before them the throne of heaven waiting. Beneath their feet the footprints of the Maker, and all around them echoed a vast silence. But when they took a single step toward the empty throne, a great voice cried out, shaking the very foundations of heaven and earth. And so is the Golden City blackened, with each step you take in my hall. Marvel at perfection, for it is fleeting. You have brought sin to heaven, and doom upon all the world. Violently were they cast down, for no mortal may walk bodily in the realm of dreams, bearing the mark of their crime, bodies so maimed and distorted that none should see them, and know them for men. Deep into the earth they fled, away from the light. In darkness eternal they searched for those who had goaded them on, until at last they found their prize, their god, their betrayer, the sleeping dragon, Dumat. 
Their taint twisted even the false god, and the Whisperer awoke at last in pain and horror, and led them to wreak havoc upon all the nations of the world. The first blight. Man, there is a ton of reading. <laughs> I'm trying to take it all in, but it is like they're they're giving me a lot. I think I'm I think I'm getting it, but uh, yeah, it is it is a lot to take in all at once, for sure. Third floor is off limits till dinner time. First enchanter's orders. Fair enough. Right. Well, after all that, I think we are finally here. 